Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Ashwab, and I am going to read, read, and only read for your guys. Almost all the chapters of 9th ICSE. So let's begin. So today I am going to read chapter number four, Hearts and Hands, by O. Henry. At Denver, there was an influx of passengers into the coaches on the eastbound BM Express. In one coach there sat a very pretty young woman dressed in elegant taste and surrounded by all the luxurious comforts of an experienced traveler. Among the newcomers were two young men, one handsome of presence with a whole uh, black frank continence and a manner and other ruffled glum-faced person heavily built and roughly dressed. The two were handcuffed together. As they passed down the aisle of the coach, the only vacant seat offered was a reserved one facing the attractive young woman. Here the linked couple seated themselves. The young woman's glance fell upon them with a distant swift disinterest, then with a lovely smile brightening her countenance and a tender pink tinging her rounded cheeks. She held out a little grey gloved hand when she spoke her voice full sweet and deliberate proclaimed that its owner was accustomed to ski to speak and to be heard. Well, Mr. Easton, if you will make me speak first, I suppose I must. Don't you rec ever recognize old friends when you meet them in the West? The younger man rose himself sharply at the sound of her voice, seemed to struggle with a slight embarrassment, which he threw off instantly and then clasped her fingers with his left hand. It's Miss Fairchild. He said with a smile, I'll ask you to excuse the other hand, it's otherwise engaged, just at present. He slightly raised his right hand, bound at the wrist by the shining bracelet to the left one of this companion. The glad, the glad look in the girl's eyes slowly changed to a bewildered horror. The glow faded from her cheeks, her lips parted in a wage, relaxing distress. Easton, with a little laugh as if amused, was about to speak again when the other fostered him. The glum-faced man had been watching the girl's countenance with veiled glances from his keen, shrewd eyes. You'll excuse me for speaking, miss, but I see you're acquainted with the marshal here. If you'll ask him to speak a word for me when we get to the pen, he'll do it and I'll make things easier for me there. He's taking me to Leavenworth prison. It's seven years for counterfeiting. Oh, said the girl with a deep breath and returning color. So that is what you are doing out here, a marshal? My dear Miss Fairchild, said Easton calmly, I had to do something. Money was a way of taking wings onto itself and you know, it takes money to keep still step with our crowd in Washington. I saw this opening in the west and well, a marshal ship isn't quite as high as a position as that of ambassador but so that's it for today guys i'll read the ahead of the chapter in the part two and finish the chapter in two parts thank you so much for watching goodbye bye bye tata goodbye Gaya.